Have you ever thought of something that you knew was going to fail, but you decided to go ahead and do it anyway? It's like limping in in the small blind on a five-way pot with pocket king. It's like asking someone to co-sign for you on an auto loan when you know that they need a co-sign. It's like deciding to build a whole beat for a YouTube video on a beatbox that doesn't have a save feature when the power may go out. Well, that's exactly what I decided. And sure enough, power goes out, I lose everything on the NPC. But luckily, I have about seven hours or more of footage of the whole beat building process. So I'm gonna do this whole thing over and we're gonna be building a beat from scratch on an MPC 4000. We're gonna create the whole backbone of the beat on the MPC 4000. We're going to put it on the DAW and make a final mix, dump it onto tape, and then we're gonna put it back into the DAW for the final master. This is Chameleon Theory 7 Part A. Let's get it. Before we get started on the whole beat building process, I seriously want to thank everyone who subscribes, listens, watches, supports me, buys my music, or any of my, uh, my physical releases. It is much, much appreciated, and I can't thank you enough. So now, building a beat from the very beginning to the very end. So we're talking about the entire process, okay? From thoughts, whenever you're uh, cooking, digging, whatever it is you do, whether it be on instruments to begin with, whether it's on looking for samples on YouTube, looking for samples online, looking for samples on records, for tapes, anything. Uh, these are the, uh, the thoughts that we're going to talk about out loud uh, while we're creating this beat. Uh, and it helps me kind of uh, just think about things that would be racing through my head. It allows me to slow down when I'm doing thoughts. So whenever you see people talking to themselves like they're crazy, they're really not. I mean, if you're talking to yourself, you're allowing yourself to slow down. You know how fast your thoughts are. I mean, just imagine. Imagine how many thoughts, or just remember how many thoughts are coming through your mind every second that you're awake, every second that you're asleep. There is so much activity racing through that beautiful brain of yours. So... For you to be able to translate that, you're allowing yourself to process your mind and to translate it out into words out of your mouth. It really helps you slow down the process and to start thinking about it. So you might want to give it a try sometime, okay? This has actually been a surprising revelation of myself. When I'm talking about what I do in the process, it actually helps me remember what I do. So let's go ahead and start jumping into the uh, samples. I'm not going to be naming the artists, not because I'm trying to hide these samples from you. I think it's more important the process in this video and not talking about, yo, what, what is that? Here's the first uh, drum break. Very nice. The second one is actually going to be the main part, the main ingredient of the drums. That first sample is what I like to hear uh, to add into the main uh, drum break. I like the, uh, the sound of that first sample that we heard. I like the groove of this other one. And adding those two together, I think is going to be a very unstoppable force. So those two breaks are going to be blended and molded into one chameleon break onto the sample of the, uh, the synths. Now that we know what those three main elements are going to be, we're going to be making those into a track. So I'm going to go ahead and jump in, chopping up everything. If you are curious about the chops, I did make a 25 minute video a few weeks ago that shows you how I chop breaks. I would suggest if you are interested in doing that, and I highly implore it if you're not very well versed into chopping breaks, especially on an NPC, to go back and look at that video. I will put the link down below in the comments and I'll put the link also in the description box here on this video.
most of the time, everything is a happy mistake. When it comes to creating something, just remember that there will be a tomorrow. Okay, you got to look forward to that. You can't just rush something. So take your time into what it is that you're trying to cook when it comes to uh, creating your own music. Uh, and then there will be little nuggets and sparks of brilliance. And then sometimes if you're way more advanced, if you're one of those elite minds uh, when it comes to music creation, then you will have several occurrences of brilliance if you allow yourself to do that. Here is what I've come up with for the melody. What I did was I chopped it up into 16 steps, but I noticed that after messing with everything, I don't need all 16 steps. What I need is 10. For the very beginning, I'm gonna take those four main bars. So now I have that sample. The next line, I just only needed two pads. Then I only need two pads for the next notes and then two pads on the last one. Here it is. So now that I have my melody and that to me sounds interesting enough to go ahead and proceed, then you can start messing with the drums. I'm gonna create a sequence with just these sounds. I called it organs. So I'm going to add the organs onto uh, the first sequence. And on an MPC, you get different tracks. And on my sequence one, the organ, and it's only going to be on that particular track, just those sounds. Then on the next one's gonna be the drums. And then the next one will have some fills and then the bass on the next track. And then it'll have any other samples that I have, so on and so forth. I'm gonna go ahead and start playing and thinking about you know what that tempo might be. I'm gonna try 160 and just kind of listen to that tempo. Now on my sequencing, now that I'm talking about 170, 160, um, that's the BPM. Now, it's normally half of that. You know, whenever you're recording, it's, it's actually 80 BPM if I'm at 160. Uh, but I do the double time for a lot of different reasons. It's just something I came accustomed to. Uh, first and foremost, I just like the feel of having that fast uh, metronome than having the slow one. I flow better whenever I'm coming with my sequencing. So I double time it. An advantage to that is that now I have double the capability uh, when I'm going into any kind of time correction. So if I want a time correction and I wanted to make fast hits um, that you'll notice, for example, like on um, Silver Beat Matter. If you listen to the uh, hi-hat work that I did on that particular track, that's one of the advantages of having that double time time correction. I'm going to try 170, okay? I think that the uh, sample itself or the, the pattern itself is good, but you notice how that kind of like stops. It's got that dead space in between. I really don't necessarily want that in, in, the, in the beat. So I'm gonna go ahead and speed up the timing again. This is at 170 BPM. I'm gonna go to 175. Try 180. So 180 to me sounds like it's about right. So I'm gonna go ahead and hop on to my uh, my break part and start messing with the pattern. me 
to be able to get a little bit more creative on the movement around the pads. I don't want that much of it going on. I think uh, to be able to dumb it down just a little bit, to simplify it a little bit better. I'm gonna go ahead and mess with this a little bit more. I think for sure, these four bottom pads are gonna be kept. I like this. That sounds cool. And to me, sounds like it would be more of a, uh, you know, the, uh, the the chorus part than the verses part. You know what I'm saying? So I noticed something that the, uh, I need a hi-hat, but it's got that snare hit. And I really don't want to cut this particular sample down. Um, so that way I omit the uh, snare out. Remember, I have a whole other uh, break kit sampled. So I want to add those samples in with this one. So I think there's a, 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 a just a, a hi-hat by itself that would be able to be useful for this beat. So I'm going to go ahead and find that real quick. This pad five, I want to change that sample. So I'm gonna go in here and look at my chops that I did and find a hi-hat that would be by itself uh, to use on this particular pad. And I think on the, uh, let's see, is break, this first break that I sampled and find a, uh, a sound. Well, hell, there's one right there already. Yeah, that one's pretty good. Let's remember that. So that's uh, break one, two. That one's pretty low. I like that one. That one's good. I like those kicks. These kicks are real deep. And I'm definitely going to be adding those along with this break as well. That one's too low. Okay, we're going to come back to those. Because I think I, those sound better to me than that. No sound there's a it's a little bit longer you know what i'm saying than than the uh than this sample feels a little deeper and, and fuller to me so i'll come back to that one you know i like that hi hat sound like there's like two sticks hitting that hat so you notice here break two one and break two two one of those has a hi hat in it and that one does not well that's the first part of the beat I like that. I could have kept this one where it's the same sample. So let's listen to that. You know what I'm saying? That sounds pretty dope too. But uh, just these little things and nuances that you can do into your beats um, will help you. And, and you personally would be more satisfied with it. Just keeping everything interesting. You know what I'm saying? For yourself. Again, the average listener is not going to notice these things. What they are going to notice is that they're vibing to it and they just can't explain why they like it so much. Well, a lot of it has to do with the energy that you've been putting into your own music. You know what I'm saying? You're putting these the, the thought and the passion into it and taking the time to changing up things like that. Even though it would take you an extra 45 fucking minutes to do something, why don't you just go ahead and try it? You know what I'm saying? You may really appreciate what you did and that's what's creating... Uh, your music and making you feel it. You know what I'm saying? And the uh, listener is going to feel that translation into the the notes and the rhythm that you had uh, created. Back over to the hi-hats. I think this one here, I want, again, I want to dumb down this beat. You know what I'm saying? I, I want it to just not be as complex as what the uh, drummer has. So here, I'm going to change this one to that other hi-hat, and I'm going to listen to see what I think it sounds like. So I got, here's the sample of the hi-hat, which is 10. We're going to look for two. Break one, two. There it is. So when you notice that these two hits are different, it's the same hi-hat, it's the same stick hitting the hi-hat, it's the same mics that was recorded uh, to record the, uh, the drum, but that hit is just different. Remember earlier when I was talking about the uh, that hi-hat, I want to come back to it because I thought it might sound a little bit better and it's a little bit longer too. I'm going to try that out. You 
Yeah. What I want is a, uh, I want a double kick, like a, that. I'm going to get that over here. And I'm going to see if there's another one that's double kick. Yeah, I think this is my best bet right here, this one. All right, so let's try this out. Yeah. See, I want to keep it simple like that, you know what I mean? But with the chorus, my main intention is to have the drums kind of show off. The drummer's going to be showing off a little bit more uh, to accent the whole beat, to give it that climax feel uh, of the beat. Uh, that's what I've had in my mind since day one when I've heard this uh, break. So now Ooh. we're going to start incorporating more of these sounds into there, you know what I mean? The busier uh, parts of the uh, drum break. So let's first start with the organs. Let's go ahead and get the, uh, the new one going. Sounds good. change up is what I'm going to add on later, you know what I'm saying? So that sounds like we got the backbone going for the uh, the whole track. But the drums, however, I'm still going to add a few more elements to the drums. These, because I want the low end and these, these snares right here. This will help me change up the way this sounds, you know what I'm saying? So I'm going to go ahead and go into track number three, which is my drum fills, and I'm going to go ahead and add those up. same time I got two snares going on at the same time and see these echo out a little bit loud longer you notice I have them tuned differently and what I did for these kicks those kicks are filtered down and that's from that first break that we showed a long time ago I even have one of those motherfuckers but I don't think I'm gonna need it all I need really is these snares and these kicks. So I'm going to sequence two, three, four, five, and six. Now number seven. time to add more elements to the beat okay so we've recorded the uh, the main beat we got drums 
and we also have the main melody which is that synth. We're gonna go in and add a couple more textures off the MPC. We sampled everything off the vinyl so far. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hop on to uh, YouTube and we're gonna sample a couple things off of it. The first piece that I sampled off of YouTube is a, uh, is a jazz saxophone piece. Uh, I wanna use the saxophone for the horn section of adding to this beat. So here's the first sample. The second sample. And I like that uh, extra Rhodes texture to it as well. I think that sounds pretty damn nice. Now you notice how it keeps looping? I set that up on a loop. And what it does with the MPC, which I'm very happy that the 4000 does the same thing as my 2K XL, is whenever I set the loop and I bring the decay down, it depends on how long I hold that pad for, but it'll keep playing and it'll start fading down slowly. Let me go ahead and show you an example of what that sounds like. There it goes. I'm let go, and it's still playing. If I let go earlier, it fades down earlier. So now the second samples that I've got. Let's listen to the entire sample. Pistol whip him with the funky rhythm I be kicking. Boom. That's all I need. So now what I've done with this small bar, small phrase. Pistol whip him with the funky rhythm I be kicking. I separated every single, not every single syllable, but a lot of the words, I have separated them all out. So now let's listen to the chops that I have of that. Funky rhythm, funky rhythm, whip him uh. with the funk kicking. Funky rhythm, whip him uh. with the funk kicking. Pistol whip uh. him with the funky rhythm I be kicking. Kicking, kicking, kicking. Now these three are interesting as well. Here is my thought, okay, on the on this part here. Pistol whip him uh. with the funky rhythm I be kicking. Kicking, kicking, kicking. If you ever listen to a, a, an old school analog delay, okay, or a tape delay, you'll notice that it does like this little bit of up and down uh, warble as it is decaying. Pistol whip him uh. with the funky rhythm I be kicking, kicking, kicking. Kicking. So the way I made that sound like that is I tuned down kicking. each one kicking. of these kicking. and I filtered down little by little like it's decaying. The volume is going away a little bit and it comes back up. Pistol whip uh. with the funky rhythm I be kicking. 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 These are little things that I do with majority of my beats. They're just little bit of seasoning to my, to my flavor. Um, this is something that typically somebody is not really going to pick up or really appreciate the way I do, but this this gets me, just as I was talking about earlier, it helps me vibe better with my beat. If I'm vibing better with my beat, there's a lot more passion, there's a lot more love being put into it. I might be going crazy, I might think that, I might think all these things, and the listener may not even uh, like the beat, but in the grand scheme of a whole beat, this is a very small victory, but every little small victory will definitely help you in the creation process. So whenever I think about these, and we'll start molding and blending it all together, so that way you can get a feel for what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? Pistol whip him uh. with the funky rhythm, I be kicking, 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 kicking. You'll start to see, once I start adding these to the beat, what I'm talking about. When everything's going on, it starts to sound like that is a delay. Funky fun Now these, I have these set. Fun 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 whip, whip. With, with, kick, kick, so when I kick, touch them, with, 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 funky, funky, they start to. Funky whip them with the kicking. Funk with, with, kick, with, with, kick, with, funky, with, with, funky. I do this a lot with my beats as well. Okay, I've never really shared this or how to do these things, but I like to add that. I can't scratch on record. Okay, I've never tried it, never attempted it in all my years of music creation. I've never just tried to scratch. The first time I heard Prefuse 73's Vocal Studies and Up Rock Narratives, uh, almost 20 years ago, I was blown away. I had never heard somebody make a beat like that. And he did a lot of those vocal chops. This That was my direct influence and, and why I do that. Me, uh, a person who doesn't rap, you know what I mean? I've never really done any of that. I've written plenty of lyrics, but I've never written any raps. Uh, this... This helps me if I, don't, if I don't have an MC that is hopping on a beat or collaborating with me on a track 
uh, for raps, sometimes I feel like it'll have a particular different type of vibe if I add some kind of uh, vocal spice to it. I have 10 sequences, okay? And this 10 sequences is gonna go all the way from, from like the verses part, if you look at a format, uh, the traditional format of a uh, track, the first six sequences is like pretty much the verses. The next four sequences are the chorus, okay, or the hook. That's the part that is going to piss the play out with the, the whole thing. Kicking, 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 kicking. So, from sequence one to sequence six, it's going to be a build up. This is track one, or sequence number one. I'm thinking about having one and two just by themselves and just kick it right off. Uh, instead of just playing out the uh, the other parts, I don't want to do that. So here's number three. So that's, that's my thought, you know what I'm saying? So I have the first two sequences just by themselves. This will kind of give you the flow. This is giving you a taste of what this beat is going to be like. So I think I'm gonna feel that. Uh, let me go ahead and go next to the uh, to the last one. All right. So this one's got gonna get kind of wacky right here at the very end, and then right here when it drops. Just to whip them with the funky rhythm, I'll be kicking. Boom. No, I think this. Rhythm, I be kicking. Just to whip him with the funk. With funk, pistol, just to whip him with the funk. Kick, just to whip him with the funk. With funk, funk, kick, just to whip him with the funky rhythm, I be kicking. Just to whip him with the funky rhythm, I be kicking. Kicking, kicking, Just to whip him with the funky rhythm, I be kicking. Kicking, kicking, Just to whip him with the funky rhythm, I be kicking. Kicking, kicking, all right so i still have sequences eight nine and ten which i will do here in just a moment but i now want to go back and add the horns so now we're going to remember uh, sequences number one and two. I'm going to leave those alone. So now I'm going to go into three, and that's, I think, when I want to add horns. Number six. All right, so now I have all of sequences one through six. We still need to add bass. My favorite way to create bass has been just simply this. You got a cable, an audio cable, plug it into your sample, into your sample in, and you can hear it. That's my bass. Fucking cable buzz. Once you have it sampled in, then you go into the actual sample itself, 
and just simply filter it down. Tune it to your track and you have bass. Funky rhythm. There's my bass. So let's listen to what it sounds like. Sequence number three. That's it. That's it. That's that's my bass. So now we're gonna go ahead and record the bass onto all the tracks. So now I'm going to do that on every track. And I'll play everything a little bit differently on each track. That's important instead of just kind of copy and pasting each... Um, a sequence to double it up uh, because you'll play things a little bit differently at each time and to me that's that's important it's just again the little things i can't stress that enough when you're building an entire song now let me listen to that. Yeah, so let's go into number five. So now I'm going to go ahead and, and record on the tracks uh, or the uh, sequence number seven, which is the main chorus. I'll go ahead and complete eight, nine, and ten of the sequence uh, off camera. So now I'm going to go into the uh, horn section. Now, remember, I have another. That's the way it's going to sound. Now, how I'm going to do that is this. I'm going to change it to 16 levels. I'm going to add the velocity to that sample, meaning that when I do this, I turn it on. Now, my pads are 16 levels of the same sample. So let's go ahead and listen to again. Here's a sequence with no reverb, and here it comes with the reverb on the one. Gives it more slap back. So now let's listen to the beat again with the vocal chops because the vocal chops really start to come out. With the 
I'll be kicking. Just the whip with the funky rhythm. I'll be kicking. Kicking. Just the whip with the funky rhythm. I'll be kicking. Kicking. Just the whip with the funky rhythm. I'll be kicking. Kicking. Just the whip with the funky rhythm. I'll be kicking. Kicking. Just the whip with the funky rhythm. I'll be kicking. So anyway, this is pretty much the entire track that I want to use that is coming from the NPC. Any additional music that we're going to be creating is going to be coming from DAW into tape and then back into the DAW for the master. So what I mean by the first time I say DAW is I'm going to think of more things for this chorus part because I want these to shine a little bit more. I want those to be able to kind of like be more pronounced. So I don't think I'm going to be using this exact sample. I might add a Rhodes keyboard in there just to give it a little bit more of a mellow feel, but a little bit more pristine sound to it uh, in the main chorus. So yeah. Yo, I hope you enjoyed part A of Chameleon Theory, episode seven. Stay tuned for part B. Where we venture into the world of DAW and venture into the world of analog. If you have any questions or wanted to leave a comment, please do so in the comment section. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions that you may have. If you like what you see, smash the like. If you like what you heard and eager for the next word, hit subscribe. This is Chameleon Sessions. Peace. <laughs>